Hey folks, let's go ahead and do a, ch a point charge problem together here. Um, I have three point charges and what you should do if you haven't already done this is go ahead and make a drawing on your paper of these three and um, try to solve, try to answer the questions on your own before moving ahead with the video. So the three point charges are shown, our givens are K, the constant Q, which is helping to describe the charge magnitude and D, which is just a unit distance. Um, I've named the charges A, B, and C just for ease of reference. I think that's a good idea to do in these point charge problems. And uh, we're being asked here to determine the net force on each particle. So if you haven't already worked this on your own, go ahead and record the problem, uh, hit pause on the video, and then work it out on your own, finding the net force on each particle here. This is basically a skills problem. Uh, and then come on back to the video if you'd like to work through it together. Okay, so uh, well, let's go ahead and move forward. The first thing I would want to do here is analyze the geometry of the situation. It's a nice right triangle. Um, but the distance, the one distance that isn't given here that I'm going to be interested in is this here. That was not great. Um, this line between A and C. So uh, because this is a nice right triangle here, I can see that this is going to be D root five here, just using Pythagorean theorem. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna label an angle. It's up to you whatever angle you label, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose this guy in here. I'll call this phi. And then I know I'm going to be splitting um, force vectors up into components. So that's something that I like to do right from the beginning is go ahead and find the sine and cosine of phi right now because I know I'm going to reference that later. So I can look at this and figure out here that the sine of phi is 1 over root 5 and cosine of phi is 2 over root 5. Okay. So I've got those in the bag. The next thing I want to do before I proceed any further is choose a coordinate system here. So I'm going to choose um, positive y to be upward and then positive x to be to the right. So for my um, ijk notation for my coordinate system, that's of course going to give me positive j hat upward and positive i hat rightward. So now everything's kind of set for me to start solving the problem. Um, how I'm going to do this, of course, notice that we're being asked for the net force on each particle. So um, I'm going to draw a free body diagram for each of these three particles here. So we'll start with particle A. So if I look at particle A, um, let's see, I guess I'll do this down here. My free body diagram for A. And if you're working through this with me a little bit at a time, as I start doing something like a free body diagram, pause the video, draw, the, draw it in yourself, and then wait and check in. Um, so, okay, free body diagram for A. We're going to put in a nice little coordinate system here. And I want to remind us that this is our positive uh, Y here, and then rightward is our positive X. So um, we have positive upward and positive rightward. So if I look at particle A, I see that it's acted on by um, both particle B and C. So particle A is going to be attracted to particle B. If you look at A and B, they have opposite signs. So particle A is attracted to B. That'll be an arrow downward. And the notation I would use here is F A B, and that is the uh, electrostatic force between particles A and B. And then, of course, particle A is going to be repelled from particle C. They have the same sign. They're both positive charges. So there's there will be a repulsive force there. Go ahead and draw that guy in. Um, and that I would label F A C. The force between A and C, and this of course is that angle phi that we had drawn into the first 
uh, picture, and if I can draw it into this diagram as well here, um, that angle phi, this is right triangle, and this is our angle phi in there. Okay, so that's my free body diagram for A. Um, the force on vector A then, I can write this in unit notation, is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, force AC cosine phi, and that'll be in the negative I hat direction. Um, that's our only horizontal there. And so then we'll go move to J hat and we have force AC sine phi, which is upward, so that's positive Y. And then we have force AB, which is directed downward. And that's all J hat there. So that is um, the force on particle A. Now, of course, I have to put these forces all using Coulomb's law in terms of Q and K and D, but that's a little bit secondary to the force analysis. So what I'm going to model for you guys for the most part, especially starting here, is focus on the physical forces. Make sure you get those right. Popping the magnitudes in is a different level of skill. It's a little lower level than the skill of doing the force analysis here. So let's emphasize this first. So there's um, free body diagram for A. Uh, let's see, let's do B. Here again, I'm gonna put B on a little coordinate system. Upward positive and rightward positive. And if I look at particle B, it's going to be attracted to particle A and it's attracted to particle C. It has opposite signs for both of them. So it's attracted up to particle A, that's force AB, and then it's attracted to the right to particle C here, force um, BC. Okay, and then um, just to point out real quick that this these are going to be third law pairs, this force AB, force AB here, right? That's a third law pair. So that's just something to keep in mind um, because it helps confirm that you're doing things correctly if you have an understanding of third law from 221. Uh, so that's that's B. Let's see. I'm going to kind of separate this out. So if I'm going to draw in uh, or write an expression for force on particle B, let me look at that. That's pretty simple right there. I've got force AB. All of that is positive I. Oops, positive I hat. And then I have force BC, uh, and all of that. Oh no, that just happened wrong. Hopefully you at home were like, hey, let's make this eye cuter too. Um, so going back to our pencil here. So force BC, I hat, and then force AB, J hat. So if you're wondering why notation wise, I don't switch the subscripts around, I don't do that. Um, if you were in my class last quarter, I might've given you this little talk already, but the reason I don't do that is because these for me are just representing the magnitude and by Coulomb's law, the magnitudes are exactly the same. So I tend to, um, you know, I tend to keep them in alphabetical order and not swap them out. Um, I use, other ways of describing the direction. Okay, cool. So that's B. Now let's go ahead and do C. I'll do that up here. Same sign convention. If I look at particle C, uh, I see that it's going to be repelled from particle A. something like this. 
that'll be FAC. Here's my phi. And then um, particle C is attracted to particle B because they're opposite signs. So. And again, you can look for those third law pairs here, right? I see that I have a force BC here and I expect to see that third law there. And then force AC, I expect to see the equal and opposite force. So that's just, it's kind of just like a check you can do on your work as you're working through these configurations. It's handy, it helps you not get directions backwards. So now let's figure out the um, net force on particle C. All right, we're gonna have force AC cosine phi minus force BC, that's our I hat component. Um, and then you can say plus or minus, there are different ways of doing this. Um, I'm gonna here choose to say plus force AC sine phi, and then I'm going to put negative j hat here. You can do either way. You can um, put a negative sign in front of the term and have that be positive j hat. It, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that is our three. The next step for us is going to be to um, figure out what, what these different magnitudes are and then substitute those in. So let's do that on the next page. So our magnitudes uh, if I look at force AB, let's just do these magnitudes one at a time, okay? So it's going to be K times the magnitude of particle A. And this, remember, is not including the sign. Coulomb's law can do nothing for you for direction. All Coulomb's law does is find you magnitude. So absolutely drop the signs. Um, so particle A is going to be 2Q. Particle B has a magnitude also of 2Q. The distance between them is D, so that's squared. So we end up with, for this guy here, 4KQ squared over D squared. That's that magnitude I can now sub in. Force between um, A and C. It's okay. Particle A still has magnitude 2Q. Particle C has magnitude 5q. And then the distance between them is uh, root 5d. So that's going to give me 5d squared when I square that distance. And here I'll be left with 2kq squared over d squared. And then finally, force BC. Charge B has a magnitude 2Q, C has a magnitude 5Q. They are a distance 2D apart, so when I square that, I end up with 4D squared. And so here I have 5KQ squared over 2D squared. Okay, so I have my three magnitudes now. So if I go back, let me go back to the page where we just were. These expressions um, these expressions here are in terms of notice these forces, right? FBC, FAB, the way that these are written. So all I would have to do at this point is go in and substitute for each one of those. And that's what we're gonna do next. The other substitution we need to do, of course, is you'll see that we have a cosine phi and sine phi scattered around here. And remember on our first page, let me just go back to there, that we figured out from the geometry our sine phi and cosine phi. And that tends to be why I do that right at the beginning. I know I'm going to use those. I know I'm going to break up into components. So might as well figure that out so I can substitute in. Um, so now you just have to do your substitution, basically, to make this all make sense. So for 
for my a. Now I'm writing this as a vector. If I want a vector quantity, I want you guys to give it to me in unit vector notation, right? So um, that is going to be my force a. I will look back to here. Force ac cosine phi. So that will be 2k q squared over d squared. And cosine phi was 2 over root 5. And that's negative i hat plus um, FAC, which is two K Q squared over D squared times sine V, which was one over root five. You can go back and revisit that. Minus FAB, which is four K Q squared over d squared, and that was all j hat. So this is my final expression here for f sub a. All right, that's my final expression for f sub a. So what we're going to do, uh, the next step would be to go through and do that same thing for the other two. So you can check that in the written solution. I'll go ahead and finish this out on the video here. It feels like it's kind of going to be boring to watch, but if you want to um, see it happen, then feel free to keep watching. Okay, my next one that I'm going to express here is F sub B. So F sub B is... Um, Oh, all right, this was the really easy one, FBC I hat. So FBC is just going to be 5KQ squared over 2D squared I hat plus FAB J hat. Uh, so FAB is just 4KQ squared. over d squared j hat. So that's my f sub b. The last one I have to answer now for this problem is finding f sub c. We were asked to find the net force on each of these charges. So f sub c is going to be um, fac cosine phi. So 2k Q squared over D squared cosine phi, which is 2 over root 5, minus FBC. And that is all I had. plus FAC sine phi to the negative j hat. So that gives me 2k q squared over d squared times 1 over root 5 from that sine phi. And uh, that's negative j hat. Okay, that's my f sub c. So that concludes this problem.